Hey folks, welcome back to the big show. Video number two on the Z1900. And I don't think it'll be a terribly long video because you know we pretty much got everything done, including bolting on the four and the four exhaust. Anyway, I did film the installation of the exhaust. It'll be a breakout video that I'll put out. I don't know exactly when. Because uh, it might be interesting for somebody that is putting on an exhaust sim similar to that because I kind of go over a couple of specifics to this exhaust and some general good practice uh, information on installing them. But, you know, watch it if you want. If not, you know, it'll get a few views maybe from somebody in, I don't know, Czechoslovakia or something. That's good. I like Czechs. I like Czech cereal too, but I digress. Anyway, this is what we're going to do. I am going to give you some information as to where we're at right now because there have been just a couple of small little changes and then we're going to fire up see how it sounds with the four into four let's get right to it this is completely cosmetic but i did take the band clamps off for the intake side and painted them they look nicer all this is otherwise the same except I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I went into the carbs, which I can do in situ just by taking these uh, big, you know, bung caps off, bung, and I changed the jetting from 125 down to 120 for the mains. The slows are still at 25, and I got to be honest with you, I just had a feeling about it, you know, more than a feeling, really, so hopefully that's going to work, but again, I'm pretty sure the 25s and the slows are going to be good. Remember, 20 is stock. And I'm going to explain a little jetting stuff here in a second, but uh, as far as my kind of thinking process and rationale for this, but, um, you know, I can do the mains in situ, like I said, so it's not going to be a big deal. Remember, 113 is stock, which is, I think, really lean for mains, and 20 for the slows. So maybe 120 and 25 will be the, the magic numbers. So I'm going to hook you up to fuel and hook the battery back up, and I'll set you up kind of toward the back, I guess. We'll see how she runs. We're about set, but I wanted to mention a viewer um, on the last video asked why the one of the throttle cables was dancing around here when I actuated the throttle. That's because this is a throttle push. I'm only using the throttle pull right now, just for simplicity's sake. So if I got to pull the carbs, it's just one less thing I got to do. But once we uh, dial this in or make sure it's dialed in, then of course I'm going to hook all these up proper. So I just wanted to explain that real quick. All right, so uh, where are we? All right, everything's hooked up. Let me fuel her up. Fill her up, Jack Benny. Uh, fill her up. Battery is hooked up. I think we're gonna have to give her some enricher. See what we got. Gotta warm up. I don't know if I like that. Um, I think I think I might change those over to 122 and a halfs. Kind of liked it better with 125s in it, but that was with the other exhaust. So uh, you know, a little pop there when you just start to crack the throttle, which should absolutely not be the case because the timing is spot on. And we've got good spark. Now I have new spark plugs, but I haven't put them in because we really don't need them at this point. I don't believe because they're all sparking good. This is more of kind of a maintenance thing, but. Uh, you know, that, that seems still to be a little lean to me. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, do that. I'm going to bump them up a little bit more on the mains. Failed to mention in the last clip that I do not have 122 and a halfs in stock. So I just bumped it right back up to the 25s. That was the one you saw me doing on number one. So uh, really quick on the jetting thing. Now, it's really an art to jet these things, and by no means am I an artist. But... I can tell you that on a Makini jet versus like Cahin, Makini jets are about, they are, not about, they're a thousandth of an inch diameter difference between each step. 
Okay, a step is, for example, 117 and a half to 120, that's one step. And then 120 to 122 and a half is another step and so forth. Now the Niche Cycle Supply website does not show a 113, which is what was in here. It shows a 112 and a half, then a 115, 117 and a half, and so on. So the 113s that are in here are basically the same as a 112 and a half, so we'll say stock. So if you go between 113, which was what was in here, and 115, that's 1,000, and then 117 and a half is two, so you go all the way up to 125, it's like 5,000, 5,000, yeah. Which sounds like a pretty big difference in the jet orifice size. There's a lot of other th factors that come into play here, and uh, I'm gonna try it real quick and then change the spark plugs with the 125s in here. I just kinda wanna have a comparison directly to the way it was, but, um, yeah, it just didn't seem to be running rich enough with the uh, 120s in here. I would have liked to have tried the 122 and a half, but I just don't have them. So, and it, but the difference between a 122 and a half and a 125, 1,000. So that's not much of a difference. So let's get back to it and see how it runs with the original jetting that you saw in the last clips or the last video, I should say. I also noticed that you do not need to enrich this thing hardly at all when you lift the lever up on the enricher to get this thing going. go. In fact, when you do too, when you go full, it doesn't want to start at all, but if you just crack it a little bit, it fires right up and the idle actually comes up where it's supposed to be, which is kind of interesting. I'm not really sure why, because that's a fixed thing too, but anyway. Oh, I gotta fill the carbs. Let her warm up a bit. There it goes, better now. You gotta warm up. Very cold blooded this one. All right, I think I hear just a little bit of a miss. I don't know if there's such a thing as a partial miss, but. So let's go ahead and change them plugs to the new ones. Now that we got another baseline in the same configuration it was before. Uh, I mean, it's okay, I like it so far, but um, I'm gonna put brand new plugs in and see if there's any difference, because those are definitely a little fouled. I mean, I've cleaned them a couple times when I've had them in and out, but. All right, four new spark plugs installed, the BR8ESs, so they're resistor plugs, so they don't have the resistor caps. And I tell you what, I'm going through spark plugs like we go through toilet paper, and that's a lot. And once she warms up a little bit, it's a lot better, which you would understand, that would be typical. <laughs> Yeah, I still hear it a little bit. That I'm not too sure about. Sounds like it's coming from that side. So it'll be one or two. I don't know, let me, uh, let me think on this a bit and maybe double check the air screws. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna change them because right now they're at one and five eighths, I believe I said in the last video. Maybe back them off an eighth of a turn and go down to uh, make sure it's at one and a half because the, the more you open these, technically the leaner the mixture gets because you're letting more air into a fixed fuel rate as opposed to a fuel screw on the front here, which is opposite, generally speaking. but. You know, you gotta take in consideration that 
even in an idle, you are going to get a little bit of influence uh, on the fuel air mixture from the main circuit past the needle. It doesn't seal it off all the way. And so you have to take that into consideration when you're tuning these things, um, which is why when you put a bigger main jet in, it can, it can possibly at least somewhat influence your um, idle mixture. So let me, um, let me play with this a little bit more. Okay, I'm at dead nuts, one and a half turns, which is the factory spec. Let's take a look at this. Ichabod, knock it off. I don't want to run it too long here and get it too hot. I don't have the fan on it right now, obviously. We're only at about 160 right now, so that's good. Nice and clean. All right, that's gonna do it for now as far as running it. I'm gonna leave it um, because as I said in the very beginning of video one, the objective here is to just get it running as good as we can. And I think we're at that location right now. Location? Yeah, we're at that place right now where it's not gonna run any better than it is. I'm gonna tell you right now that based on the way the, some of the exhaust valves look with that white powdery look on them, this thing is probably uh, burning oil down the, the uh, valve stem seals, um, I'm guessing, because I don't think it's rings the way it's running. And I did do a, pressure, a uh, kind of a leak down test on it with my leak down tester. Ichabod, stop. There he is over there giving us trouble. Um, and I couldn't really detect anything coming out either past the valves or uh, inside the crankcase or blowing out the exhaust or what have you or the intake. So that leads me to believe that you probably got good valve sealing because again, the um, base compression according to the manual is 121 PSI. That's on page 82 of the original manual, the, the factory service manual. 121 pounds per square inch is standard. 85 pounds per square inch is minimum, that's the service limit, and then no more than 14 pounds per square inch difference, which is more than 10%. I always go off 10%, which would be 12, but close enough, right? So we're at 118 and 120. 118, 123, and 120 on number four. So we're right there. So, you know, the compression technically is right per the service manual. And that would mean that the valves are probably sealing okay, as I said before. But with that white, um, you know, powdery looking thing in there, that's definitely oil. So, you know, whitish, yellow, tannish. And number three, you could see it on a couple other valves as well. Um, I, I, I could see it on the boroscope when I use the side cam, but, um, you know, not on every cylinder. But at any rate, they're probably all burning a little oil from that leak down. Because I have started this up cold a couple times and it's just gone little puff, which would indicate that, you know, it's little oils leaking down into that exhaust chamber. So there you go. I mean, what else are we going to be able to do to improve this? I mean, if it was mine, I would pull the head and I, I would leave the jug because that seems to be okay. And it's a half mil over. So I'd pull the head and I do a shotgun on the head in house here and uh, do all do my normal stuff like I did on the police bike, which I don't even know it was right, but I did it anyway. But I doubt I would change the valve guides on this. Um, if I had to, I'd probably send it out for that. But if they're within spec, I would just slam it back together with new valve stem seals and uh, you know clean the valves up, clean the seats up, lap them in and, and down the road. But uh, this thing is, um, that's not part of this job. That'd be a lot of money to, for the customer. And um, we're already into this quite a bit. So. We're gonna be leaving it as is. I got it running the best I can at this point. So before we close this video out, um, I'm gonna go over a couple other things that have been done. Um, I mentioned in video one that the forks were leaking. The forks have been rebuilt and the appropriate amount of fork oil has been put in both the 10W. I do not like these aftermarket dust seals. They really are not high quality, but you can't get the OEM, so it's the best I can do. The fork seals looked okay, but um, I think I have a video on these on the channel. So if you wanted to look at those, I'll see if I can remember to link them. 
in the description. But so that's done. So the forks are all done. I mentioned uh, cleaning up a lot of this chrome. That's all done. I mentioned we're going to be sending out the instruments. That is not done, but I had to put them back up here because I wanted to get all the wiring hooked up behind the headlight and the instruments and uh, the, uh, what is it? The, in the instruments and, uh, oh yeah, the ignition switch. I'll get hooked up inside the bucket to the main harness. And the other two, as you saw in the last video, get hooked up outside here along, along the main harness, basically. So I've already got the front master cylinder rebuilt and painted, looks really good. And I've rebuilt essentially the, well, yeah, I did rebuild it. I had parts in stock for this one, believe it or not. Uh, I had the dust boot and I had the main seals. The piston was okay. So I went through this and I cleaned it up real well. It was pretty, it was actually very, very crappy inside. There's no footage on this. And got this working properly. And I am gonna replace this line. I ordered one, it was only 10 bucks. So it'll look a lot better and then just re-bleed the caliper. But, so that's all done. Uh, the only thing else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the clutch cable because this clutch is, is really hard to pull and I know that's cable. It's all rusty up in here. I have that in stock. I only have this on here temporarily because I'm letting this paint dry. You know, I didn't wanna put those clips on that are down there yet. But we're gonna to have to deal with the stator because of that grommet leaking. I still gotta to talk to the customer about that because again, we're into this pretty far as far as money goes. I don't know if he wants, I mean, it charges, so he might wanna just leave it and live with a little drippage uh, for a little bit and then get to it another time. I don't know. But um, as far as that goes, I don't believe I'm gonna be doing anything else on this than you've already seen besides bits and pieces to tidy it up once the um, tank comes back I'll make sure the fuel cock is good and then, you know, make sure the fuel lines are proper length, hook them up to the fuel cock, get all that. In other words, just normal stuff that you would do and, uh, you know, check bolt torques and put the tail section back on, yada, yada. So we'll get all, and get all this, the tool tray and all that crap put back in as well. So put some oil in this um, thing for the chain. I don't know if that little pump down there is working, but um, if I got to pull the stator, we're going to be pulling the side cover. So you know, I'll check it then. So I don't know, but that's where we're at right now. I think I got you all caught up now, at least. Electri electrically, electronically, electronically, is that a word? Um, everything works, the turn signals and brake lights and so forth, all work just fine. I've already changed oil and filter, as you know, and uh, the carb work, as you saw. You might notice that there is a different fender on this bike than there was before. The old fender is right down in there, you can see it sitting there. And I'm gonna bring that fender out and show you here what happened and why that one's there and the differences. It appears that we uh, corrected a, an originality issue by doing this, but what happened was I had this fender off when I was doing the front brake because I had and the forks and so forth because I had to have all that taken apart. And I dropped something off of my tool shelf behind me here where I keep my power tools and it fell down and hit the, hit the uh, fender and dented it. But if you take a look at these two fenders, that's, that's a different fender. So when this, I ordered this one is for a 73, 74, 75 Z1. The Z1, Z1A, Z1B. So that is the correct fender and I verified that by looking at some photos of, the, uh, of this model. Especially the 73 one is what I looked at. And I'm like, well, the one that was on there matches up to a KZ900, not a Z1900. So, we have got the proper fender on this now, as far as I can tell. I had to eat that because I did the damage, so customer's not gonna pay for that. It's about 200 bucks for that fender, aftermarket fender, shipped. So it is what it is, but if I do the damage, I'm gonna fix it. So that's kind of interesting in case you saw that um, as we were going along in the video. I kind of forgot to mention it before. Well, it looks like that's gonna be about it, folks, considering um, I still need to get the tank back from the uh, paint guy or have my customer pick it up, the paint guy that did the magic supposedly. And um, I need to rebuild the uh, pet cock or the fuel cock. You said cock twice. And we got a bunch of other little stuff to do on this before we get it back together all the way to show you. I'd really like to get this video up. Today's Friday the 27th. I'm gonna do my best to do that. 
and then you'll get a look at at least where we're at so far. But I'm pretty sure I got you all caught up, except for one thing. That was easy. Wow, that's a pretty cool effect. I wouldn't leave you guys hanging like that. You know that. It's Friday the 27th at like 3.20 in the afternoon. Normally I only work till about noon on a Friday. So I kind of busted my butt today and I went and picked up all the body work and the tank and so forth from the paint guy and did all the work and worked past my normal time because I wanted to show you guys the finished product and get this video up in the channel. So I worked extra hours on overtime. Do I pay myself overtime? I guess I do. Just for you. So let's go ahead and take a walk around and we'll see what we got. Hey, yeah, so what do you think? Ichabod and I took a little ride this morning and went down to the paint place, the body shop, that he was having all this paint work done. And I think I mentioned in the first video he's gonna have the paint guy do some magic. And I talked to the paint guy about that when I went down there, a super nice guy. And um, I tell you what, I'm gonna put his information up um, uh, in the video here. I'll put like a snapshot of his business card. Super nice guy, his name is Mike. And anyway, he um, ended up doing a lot of painting on it. He pretty much almost repainted the whole thing. But he l did layover paint on these stripes where it was damaged. I guess Kawasaki must have painted them on. Otherwise, they'd be decals. It's kind of hard to paint and do sanding and stuff uh, as a prep work. So I, I, don't, I didn't ask him that much detail, but he did a phenomenal job. It looks really well. I got about a gallon of fuel in it right now. Fire it up for you real quick in a minute, running off the uh, tank, but you've already heard it run, so it's not too big of a deal. And you remember all that damage? Get off of there, Dust. You remember all that damage that was on the right side here? Let's see if I can overlay a shot of that in while I'm talking from the original video, video one. And he did a really nice job on that too. Couldn't get it all out, but I, I really, I told him, I said, I would have been happy if it was mine that he left a patina in and just, uh, you know, not necessarily a scratch as those are pretty big gouges over here, but he left some. So it's pretty cool how this came out. You know, it really, really came out well. So these are the original Kawasaki emblems that came off. I pulled these off before my customer took the tank. He d took these off because these went with the side covers and then put them back on. Real nice job on this as well. And so I, I was real happy when he, when he showed me that. I went, holy cow. Actually, I didn't say holy cow, I said holy shit. Um, that's amazing work that he did. So, real nice job. And since the inside of this tank was so good, I mean, I can see my customer spending that kind of money on it, because I'm sure it wasn't cheap doing this paint work. But yeah, pretty cool. Now, I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned this. I know I don't have the drains on the little nipples. He said nipple on these carbs. I know I don't have them because I ordered some hose for this purpose. I ordered some hose that I know at some one point in time at least is the right size, like three mil hose that's black. And they sent me three mil hose that's gray. So it looks like crap. So I, I don't have that hose. I'm gonna have to reorder it and make sure it's black. You know, this, this inlet on number one and two carb is too close to the outlet to just bend a hose around unless you have a molded hose. So I don't know if you can see this, but I did my magic with the 90 degree copper fitting to make that so it doesn't pinch. And you can't see it, and maybe that's what Kawasaki did in the first place. I don't know. But maybe they used a molded hose. I don't know. I already explained the situation with the front fender. This is the correct fender, as I said. And I looked up that other fender. That's from a KZ900B. So we had an A4 or KZ900A. That's, that's not even for that, that fender down there. That's for a KZ900B. Maybe it's the same fender, I don't know. So now we have the correct fender on here. 
I'm really happy about that. So in a way, I'm kind of glad I damaged the damn thing. But uh, still, it had, to, it had to eat 200 bucks. But hey, you know what? That's the cost of doing business, folks. All the electric is done, of course. Everything works. And the four into faux, 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 as you saw, um, that is uh, really nice. Now, if I haven't already mentioned, I have a breakout video coming out in the near future that shows the installation of this in case you're interested in learning how to do it or you're tinkering with the idea of doing it. All I can tell you is get two people, it's a lot easier. So, hey, there's a fat guy in there. Hmm. So anyway, I'll put you in the stand real quick. Let's fire it up um, in its glory. And then we're gonna definitely close this video out. Definitely. Definitely. I'm gonna tell you right now that I had the timing off a little bit. Got a little bit of in retro still. Now it's off all the way. Still not bad. As you saw before, this thing pretty cold blooded. Well, I'll tell you, folks, I'm real tickled with the way this thing came out. How many is that now, fondling this thing? I better stop. People will start talking. This is definitely um, something that um, I thought I was gonna have a little bit more trouble with, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't worked with points in a long, long time. At least, you know, except occasionally when something comes in, it's got breaker points. I was kinda like, how the hell do these things work again? You know, that sort of thing. I mean, I haven't really worked on them extensively since the 80s, like the early 80s. I had a KZ650, brand new, a 1979, I believe, that had points in it. But the next bike I bought after that was an 83 Seika 900 off the showroom floor of a Yamaha dealership. And that had electronic, you know, pickup ignition. And everything since then has had it as well. And most of the stuff I work on, even if it's an 80s bike, has that kind of ignition also. So. I'll tell you right now that, you know, I was kind of fumbling through that if you didn't figure that out from video one. But we got her done, and I'm real happy the way it runs. Super happy. I mean, I think we're just going to go ahead and leave that jetting for now. The next um, step in the operations, which I'm not going to film or anything, is I need to take it for a test ride, kind of kind of give it a little bit of a, of a thrashing. Not super thrashing, but, you know, kind of normal, like, spirited. Uh, up and down the road, around the, around the subdivision. Well, I don't live in the subdivision. Around the block, really. And we're out in the country. We don't deal with that HOA crap. So we'll do that. And then if I need to do any adjustments on the jetting, we'll do them based on what I feel on that. So I don't think we're gonna have to do it because this thing is definitely running a little bit on the rich side, which is where, again, the uh, literature from the exhaust from Z1parts.net suggests it be. Being? Yeah, so uh, I tell you what, we're gonna go, I talked to a customer, the only, I'm not gonna film any of this stuff, this is gonna be the last video on this unless there's something really remarkable. But um, he, want, he, he talked to me this morning via text and email and said that he wants to maybe go ahead and invest in doing some hardware change. I said in the first video we weren't gonna be doing all that and frankly, I really don't want to because it's a pain in the ass sitting in front of the computer and trying to find a bolt from this source and a nut from this source because nobody has everything, you know, as far as this old hardware. But that's what he wants. I'll commit some time to it in the future. But I think we're gonna be changing out some of these ultimately to kind of brighten it up. He wants to do something with the wheels. Uh, that's way out of my wheelhouse as far as spokes go. So I think he may be sending them out to Buchanan Spoke and Rim out in California. Super nice guy. I met him at a Barber Vintage Motorcycle um, event, Barber Motorsports Museum up there in Alabama, Birmingham. And uh, that was a few years ago. Uh, I forgot his first name, Kevin or something like that. Super nice guy. I suggested that place. Maybe, maybe I'll be pulling the tires off, sending them out there. I don't know. But that'll be for later down the road. Right now, we just got to get everything else tightened up, like the drain hoses and 
maybe get some other corrections made to hardware and things like that. But yeah, I'm real happy with the way it came out. And so I guess that's gonna be it. So if you're happy with the way this video came out, you know what you need to do, don't you? What you need to do is subscribe, like, share, uh, ring the bell, do whatever check boxes you need to do. But the liking and the sharing and the subscribing, they really help me out a lot. If, if it doesn't cost you a cent, if you're so inclined, I would most definitely appreciate you doing that. So I guess that's it. I know I've said that a few times, but now I mean it. I really do. Don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.